I'd like to call the Tuesday, March 21st, 2023, Board of Public Works and Safety Meeting to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Victor Splix, lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just wanted to see what movement he really has with his rotator cuff. <laughs> <laughs> Approval of minutes, do I have a motion? So moved. I will second that discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes 2-0. Swearing in a new officer, local. Officers, Chief Breton. Officers, plural. Officers. Guys need you to come up to the front. Well, you got to come all over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they do. And then we'll have you speak a little bit about yourself. So I don't know if you're prepared for that. But need you to raise your right hand. I stay your name. I am Martin. Do solemnly swear. I didn't have any pictures of that, but I saw you guys. Is the street department clear? Some of that out. Is there going to be work done? I will. I will. To the best of my ability. Faithfully execute. Position of police officer. For the city of LaPorte, Indiana. For the city of LaPorte, Indiana. So I'll be gone. Congratulations. Guys. Speak loud so everybody can hear you. Introduce your family so we all get to meet your family while you're here. All right. Come on up. Because <laughs> you're going to take pictures after anyway. Why don't you swing around? Tom, I want to get one of Okay, absolutely. Do you guys want to swing around to the front? Yeah. And introduce your family before you take that photo. Um, this is my mom, Gary. This is my dad, Dave. This is my niece, Sage. My sister, Ashley. My brother-in-law, Austin. And my other sister, Caitlin. Thank you. 
He's going to have us take one behind here. Tom, can you get in this one with us? Absolutely. The mayor. The mayor. No, <laughs> <laughs> don't get me, don't get me in trouble first day of the job now. Sorry, he's Tom. We're going to have to take that Steeler hat here, off because I knew Teddy would wear it. Hey, he's the Raiders. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. Can somebody take that? You're gonna move these seats out of the way? Okay. Oh, good. We're good. Okay. 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 Please do. Please do. How are you? Good. How are you, sir? Nice seeing you. you too. Chief, you want to take photos with the two officers and their leadership? Well, you know you want to be there. Jesse, the mayor always Any other officers? No, they're going up. No, no you got to be in the center. <laughs> Just sneak these over there for him. Well, I'm not stepping behind the photo. No, yeah. after the photo, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, send me that yes, sir, and that's our department comfort dogs. Um, hey, on the trash thing, I'm just going to hold that because we don't have any. Okay. 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 Ashley. It's a good gig. I remember. Uh -huh. It got protective real quick. That's sweet, though. Public comment. I do not have any public comment cards. Anything? Nothing on uh, social media yet. Clerk Treasurer, claims approval. Okay. We have uh, civil city claims in $1,271,806.26. Make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 2 0. Payroll in the amount of $467,211.80. Make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 2-0. Water claims in the amount of $281,982.19. Make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 2-0. And sewage in the amount of $311,958.18. Make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 2 0. Deputy Clerk Treasurer Noel, would you like to share anything else while we have you? That's it. All right. Department head reports, please be to the point. <clears throat> If you do have something, we'll begin. Beth West, transport. Morning. Just a couple updates. Uh, our new driver is trained, and he should be hitting the street by himself this week. 
Our injured driver is back and working. Um, our propane switchover has been pushed back to April 4th. Uh, per feral gas, they needed a little bit more time for equipment. Um, and as of yesterday, we've hit 10,000 riders. Great job there. Do you think there's any issue to be concerned about with feral? I don't think so. I think it has something to do with uh, labor, manpower, and uh, parts. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bert Cook? I have no Chief Snyder, fire. Uh, just report that within the past two weeks, the traffic, traffic uh, preemption was installed on the Boston Street crossing and the Scott and Hines Street crossing. So those are up and active. The only missing part is to have them installed on our vehicles right now. Three of our trucks will get those. I think 1st of April is what we have them scheduled. So that will increase safety for our personnel and the public and, and also. Chief Breton, police. Uh, flock cameras, everything's been approved through NDOT. Installation begins tomorrow on our local streets. Uh, four to six weeks, all of them should be operational and they'll be training us. Jeff Batchelor, streets and code. Uh, potholes, potholes and potholes, we're out there filming <laughs> them. Um, and then we're also doing trees around along first and Tyler Street for the Chessie, Tra Tra Chessie Trail 2, and then code, we're right around 750 violations so far this year. And why are we filling potholes? Because we are? Pot pothole free Lepore. That's right. <laughs> Legal? Uh, I have a couple items that we can address them when, when, when they come up. Uh, Mayor, I had uh, in, in the city uh, NCAA tournament bracket, I had Purdue and Kansas in the championship game, so I don't think that I'm going to be <laughs> competing for that. Uh, With many of us. Yeah. Um, Nick Minnick, engineering. Um, just a reminder, we'll talk a little bit about this later with the um, trash contract, but April 3rd is the date when we go kind of fully with the, with the new bins. We're working on the, the smaller bins, obviously, for those who – who would, who would like that, but um, it is April 3rd when they wanted to start collecting only in the bins, and then uh, later in the spring, early summer, we'll, we'll start having the yard waste in addition to that. And then also, Chessie 2 is, is rolling, as, as Jeff mentioned. The street Department's done a great job helping things keep moving. Um, if there are questions, you can contact engineering, but we have a um, um, construction inspector on site and, and available. It's Nick Smith with Lock Mueller Group. Um, and the number is 574-334-5465. So that is our, our uh, on-site construction 5465? 5465, correct. And we are not eminent domaining any homeowner's property in any way? No, no. We, we uh, acquired um, two temporary pieces of right-of-way and two permanent pieces of right-of-way about a year ago. It's, that's been wrapped up for, for quite some time now. Um, the trail is not going on anyone's private property. It's all within the public right of way, with the exception of the, the parcels we already purchased. So this is a, a federal aid project. They, they don't mess around with right of way when it comes to federal money. Jerry Jackson, wastewater. We had uh, pre construction meetings for the letters and numbers project with HRP and DNM. Um, DNM is doing the work on the basin, making the Torino basin large enough and making improvements on it. To, in order to take the stormwater from the letters and numbers project. They're gonna start within about a month. H and HRP will start up when DNM has got their project up to where it can receive the water. They're gonna be starting in June. So uh, all, all, you should see uh, construction start here in 30 days or so. Away we go. Jerry, you're encouraging people to sign up for the um, grant with spring coming, there's still opportunity oh, for the, the basement grant. Absolutely. Basement grant. Yeah. Um, the whenever anyone has an issue, we bring it up. If the guys notice there's uh, a problem with the sewer <clears> back <throat> up, they mention it. Uh, they carry the paperwork with them, and uh, we're, we've got substantially fewer applications, I think, because we're starting to get the bulk of people covered. And yeah, if anyone has a sewer back up during a storm, or had them in the past contact us so they don't have to wait to have one Absolutely they can not. call not wait till they have one get it done before you have one. Oh, that's even better be proactive yep yeah for sure 
I think we need to promote that and make sure <clears throat> people are aware of that because that's important. Don't wait till you have the backup. I should get that in the uh, in the monthly newsletter. In yeah. The, in the Tim Warner, water. Uh, good morning to the board. Uh, I, I have an update with our spring flushing. I know at the last Board of Works meeting, um, we were going to start uh, April 9th. Uh, due to some scheduling conflicts, we're going to push that back to April 16th. It's going to be one week later. Still a three to four week duration uh, by the time we move through all 1,100 hydrants in the city and gather the information we need. Uh, same, the water department starts today moving some hydrants along the Chessie Trail. Uh, right around the Bethany Lutheran area. We had some hydrants that need to be moved out of the way. And instead of taking those hydrants out of the system, um, we're basically putting them across the street. Uh, that way we still have fire protection around the church and some of the residents in that area. <clears throat> so the crews will be starting that this morning. Uh, just to uh, go on Jerry's point here, uh, we did have a construction meeting for the letters and numbers. HRP will also be installing the new water main from 10th to 18th Street. Um, will be all new services for all the residents in that area. Uh, there won't be anybody without water while we're doing that. Uh, there's a couple tie-ins we have to do that might keep a house or two uh, out of water from the main, but we'll hook them up house to house and we'll ensure that everybody has water during that process. And then I have a couple things for the agenda also. Just I'd like to clarify. So 39 North continues to move forward. We have the 39 North board president focused on attacking incorrectly our members, uh, our employees. And now I've got other elected officials we heard on the radio sending out misinformation. So to me, it's desperation because they're telling people in the public that now we require two water towers. And I've never heard that to our whole presentation with businesses, with homeowners that we're going to need two water towers which is complete a complete lie well so uh from nieces uh and howard's here he can speak about this also he's the head engineer for that um so there's going to be let's call a buffer tank at the the booster station it'll be more stored water for when those high flow events happen it doesn't strain the city system like it was it gives them more pumping time during a fire flow situation so it's not going to be a water tower it's it's I would call it more of a storage water for the booster station uh, for when those uh, high flow events happen, there, there's enough water there to, to fight the fires. Uh, Andy and I, uh, Chief and I, met with Howard uh, last week about some of the fire flows. And just alone, <clears throat> the 100,000 square foot building out there, I think at minimum requires 2,500 gallons a minute uh, for fire protection. Um, that's a minimum. Up to 4,000 gallons would be m more likely. Um, with their contracts and the limits of the system, we can only provide them with max, with nobody else using any water, 1,500 gallons a minute. So um, there's definitely a fire flow issue up there. Um, I, and I think even for the residential area, uh, minimum would be around 1,000 gallons a minute, uh, very minimum. Um, we we have a hard time producing that when there's when industry and everything else is is going full bore out in that area so it, there is not a second water tank well it, it's a water tank but it's not going to be a water tower like you see around town it's just going to be extra stored water for their system so when if there is a a high flow event out there it, it buys more time is what it does. That water will be pushed through the booster station, uh, protects our suction end of, the, of our system. So what happens when there's a low suction through the booster station? So the suction would be the city side of, of the booster station. Once that drops to 25 PSI, that booster station shuts down, shuts down. That's to protect not only the city system, but the system in 39 North. At 20 PSI, it's a mandatory boil order. That's why the station shuts down at 25. So just for instance, if, if uh, one of the fire departments pulled up on a house fire out in 39 North and we're fighting with one, higher, one hydrant and then open up another hydrant, that would drop that suction pressure down below that 25, then the, then the booster station shuts off. That's not something that we can reset from uh, through our skater programs or at our plant. That's, uh, that's a maintenance guy physically getting a phone call from the plant getting up in the middle of the night and driving out to the booster station to reset that booster station. So 
So this is normal, and maybe if these elected officials have questions, they can call us. They're not used to having appropriate infrastructure for yeah. areas like we do in the city. So they can contact Andy Snyder. They can contact you. Thank you for that clarity because, again, trying to misinform the public doesn't help, and uh, they're just not used to having appropriate infrastructure. So thank you. Well, Craig, Mayor, real quick on yes. that. I mean, I think you mentioned it. They, they've already lost one project, right? The apartment complex or condos that adjacent to Briarleaf, right, because of this exact issue? Or they'd be building right now. So uh, parents, grandparents up in a facility that may not have, you have to pump water out of a pond. You know, I know they're not used to appropriate infrastructure up there, but this is how we do things in the city of LaPorte, and it will be appropriate. So Craig Phillips, planning? Fixed it for you. <laughs> All right, well, we can stay on the 39 North uh, theme because that's been keeping me busy lately, along with many of the others on our team. It's kind of an all-hands-on-deck situation at this point. We're definitely entering a busy um, part of the process. So we're getting ready. We're preparing um, to send out notices to all the property owners, informing them of the upcoming public information meetings, the first of which will be on um, April 27th. Um, so those will be going out probably within the next few days. Um, we have a very busy day today putting together the, uh, the fiscal plan um, that's required uh, as part of the annexation process. We have meetings with all the different departments, um, most of those today and one on Thursday. So we'll be talking about all the ways that we are required to and want to provide services to the 39 North area um, as part of the process. Um, in addition to that, been busy continuing to work on the Trails, Greenways, and Pathways master plan in our department. Um, work continues on the um, downtown streetscape um, project. Um, and then um, work continues as well. Um, progress is being made with regard to the development agreements um, that we're working on um, in conjunction with other members of our staff. Um, <clears throat> including the firehouse project, the 18th Street project, and making preparations to hopefully put the Beachwood Lakes property out for uh, bid soon. So that's what I have this morning. Thank you. Andrea Smith, HR. Uh, good, mo good morning, board members. Um, today I will be distributing the salary study and job descriptions to department heads to uh, start review. I will go over um, discussion with each department head. If you are missing an employee in the packet, please let me know and I will get an extra one to you. Anticipated time for this to be uh, complete, about six months. Thank you. Mr. Schreiber could not be here today uh, from the Park Department, but he did want to say, number one, Beachwood Golf Course opens today, so please come enjoy and then he just also wanted to mention that the adult basketball league comes to a uh, successful close this coming sunday um and that should be about it so for Mr. <laughs> uh any department heads that do not have business before the board can go have a fantastic day um, new business annette leffler annual laporte triathlon So um, we have a request for a, a closed course for the triathlon that is um, started by the um, hospital foundation and then given to the YMCA and is now being um, organized by the USA Triathlon of Colorado. The um, local contact for them, his name is uh, Nick Konwerski and he sent in this um, request for use. Everything's in order. It's all the same as it has been in the past. Um, the only thing is on the, um, on the insurance papers, it doesn't list the city, it lists the county. So I'm gonna request that change. I didn't notice it till this morning. Um, but other than that, he has everything in order and it's the same request as in the past. We'll make a motion to approve. Second, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 2-0.
Thank you very much. What's the date? July 8th. You're going to do them all yourself, Jerry? I'd probably do a bicycle leg. You know a swimmer. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick men had, uh, mentioned he'd be willing to swim, and Tim mentioned he'd be willing to run. Excellent. So thank you all both. city team. <laughs> city team. Thank you three. The Good to you guys. Stooges. Nick Otis, waste contract. <laughs> so we, we have not finalized this yet. I, um, we, two, two options here. I, I have it prepared based off of the bid, that, that um, recommendation. Um, and basically what I have done is taken the, the bid that went out and, and turned that into a contract. So you have two options. Either we can approve it uh, at the first April Board of Works meeting or uh, you can, uh, pending legal review, uh, give the mayor authorization to, to sign it. So I just need the waste, waste management to confirm that the terms that basically we pulled from the bid are, are work for them. So e either, either way you want to go there. I would prefer just to, if we could, we've, this has gone on long enough. This is with pending legal approval. Yep. If Member Romine agrees, and, and it is based off of the the bid numbers that that were submitted, uh, waste management being the lowest bid. And uh, Mr. Minnick, if you could just, <laughs> we we spent a lot of time, uh, Mr. Minnick and I, on on this particular issue, uh, explain waste management again as the lowest bidder for the services we've selected because you had multiple different options, correct? Yeah, I think um, during the process we wanted to make sure that we're keeping customer prices as low as possible. Um, but looking at all the alternatives, uh, what the board approved was the lowest base bid amount. Um, and then we will continue to work with that, that um, service provider to make sure that we're doing everything we can to keep customer prices as low as pro possible. So, so do, I'll make a motion that allows the mayor to sign yep. based on legal approval. I'll second that. Discussion? Real, real quick, uh, uh, this was a discussion I had with, with, with Ms. Parthoon last night. There will be an ordinance that will go before the City Council amending the, the um, rates for trash. Updating. Uh, well, correct. Yep, and we do that. Uh, that was done after, that's done every time we do a new trash contract. So uh, we're, we're looking at whether it'll be that, since this is a four-year contract, whether we'll average that over <coughs> four years or have it change that, That'll be up to the council ultimately, but we'll bring that up. Additionally, uh, a <coughs> notice will be going out to RTS about their cans that many people have. Uh, at, um, I think I have two or three trash cans now at my house, for example, uh, reminding them that they need to pick those up or otherwise we'll treat them as donated uh, property. And Mayor, real quick, I, this came up last night about the different size trash bins for waste management. I know it came up. Do you, do you want to mention that again? That yeah, so, I mean, when you put 7,000 out there, it's difficult to say this house wants this, th that house wants that. So they put out the standard 96-gallon uh, bins and now are looking to adjust for those seniors and groups that uh, may not be able to handle the 96-gallon, and they'll be adjusting that over the next few weeks. So thank you for your patience to the public uh, as we continue to transition, and it's great to see the cans one consistent can throughout our city, keeping our community spotless. So, uh, I, might, I might add, one of the things that helps keep our costs lower is, is using the cans. So um, in the previous contract, uh, people had the option of, of renting one. Um, that's not what we're doing anymore. Uh, and just for reference, if we would have continued with the same provider, RTS, the bid they put in would have raised prices in the 8 to $10 range per month which was very significant so um, that's why we do the bid process try and get our, our prices as low as possible and, and get the best service for customers um, again the you know we, we um, by having the automated trucks and using the carts it, it saves labor and then that helps save cost to the residents so and I would like to, to thank them. Lakeshore for trying yeah. attempting direct when we couldn't contact we couldn't get a response back from RTS. Annette Leffler? I wanted to mention if we could um, just reiterate that they are only going to pick up garbage in those bins. You can't set bags outside your bin or set an additional type of garbage can with garbage. Those will not be picked up. 
at some point, what with, is it, with, April 1st, they start picking up yard waste and paper bags? Yeah, I think I don't think we have the date set yet, but okay. it'll be uh, we'll later April this spring. Third, they'll, they'll do yard waste, which is will I be mean. collected separate from those bins. Okay. So. I just because I'm getting a lot of questions about using additional garbage cans that people own already, and and I just want to make sure people <clears> realize they can do. That. I have a question too. So RTS, um, the, we were talking about the rental cans. Uh, we're getting a lot of calls at the water department, you know, because that's that's where the trash trash bills on the water water bill. Um, wondering, and and this happened to myself too. I've been billed from RTS for the rental of the can within the last three weeks uh, for the upcoming year. Uh, it's it's ninety dollars, ninety some dollars to rent that can, and uh, I'm just wondering why they're hitting up city residents for rental fees when they know they're not going to be picking up. Our trash for the next year I think that will be addressed in the legal <clears throat> notice yeah so. that's not that's not appropriate on RTS's part and and I think mayor real quick please that uh, between your office various offices at the city we received quite a few complaints about the cleanliness I mean the trash being left behind in the streets with RT like RTS <coughs> I think these trash cans and the tra type of trash trucks um, you won't see shouldn't see that is that is that fair to say yeah I think um, what we're what we're providing with with the carts is really a, a way to keep things cleaner and, and more more organized and, and have cleaner streets so cleaner neighborhoods so I do have a motion do I have a second yeah she already seconded second further discussion all in favor aye aye opposed motion passes uh, two zero uh, we'll hold off on the farmer's market contract right now. Uh, we may have a special meeting in hopes of really moving forward aggressively on a great farmer's market, making the market the market um, for the area, for the region. Uh, we're going to be moving in a different direction, and uh, so hopefully we can get that resolved with the UEA, Urban Enterprise Zone, uh, in the next day, and then we may have a quick meeting so we can get moving in preparation for the farmer's market. Chief Breton, vehicle leases. I believe you have, do you have three in front of you? That's mm. what we've gotten in so far. That's just continuation of the replacement of lease vehicles from Chrysler. They'll be slowly trickling in. Some haven't been built. Some aren't even scheduled to be built, but as we get them, we take possession of them and bring the contracts in. So just to clarify for the public, these are three cars, continuation of yes. the lease? Yes. Their turn ends after two years. He takes the cars back. And the cost is the same? Yes. Ms. Romine, are you comfortable? Yeah, I think we were doing them. I remember this coming up before the board maybe a month ago or so. We were going to do them every time they came available. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Right. So, so this is just three for now. There were going to be how many total? Ten. Ten. So where are we at then with the number? With the, just that's this the first the three. This is the first three. Yeah. Okay. We have no idea when they're coming in. They just okay. Motion to, to approve. Like I said, and then I also ask that Courtney can sign the lease agreements as they come in. Make, make a motion approve. to approve these three leases and give Courtney Parthun the permission to sign. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Beth West. We have the opportunity to uh, provide training for all of our drivers. It's a public assistance techniques. What it is is uh, it's a trainer that's certified through INDOT to train all of our drivers how to properly um, strap down a wheelchair in the back of the buses. Um, right now we're doing driver versus driver versus driver and I think we need to all have a refresher course and to do it properly. Um, it's an all day event. Um, for all of our drivers to be able to attend this, I need to basically shut transport down for a day. Um, we're doing, it's not until June 27th, it's a Tuesday. Um, it'll help us out because it's the end of the month. The schools will be done. We have less riders about that time, but this will give us more than enough time to notify all of our, all of our regular riders that we're gonna be shut down for the day. Um, our dispatchers will report to work. They will be answering the phones. They will try and accommodate those that are 
calling in whether they're scheduling you know for the next day sometime during the week um, so we can keep up with that but I think this will be very beneficial for all of our drivers to be able to shut down for the day and have this proper training and this will be mandatory for all drivers yes um, there will only be one driver that probably won't need to attend it because she's already getting the training through Paladin so this is the same type of training that Paladin does they're the ones that referred me to this trainer um, so I feel very confident that we'd be getting very upscale training for all of our drivers motion to approve so moved second discussion all in favor aye aye opposed motion passes thank you thank you Tim Werner uh, thank you. Uh, so this morning I'm bringing to the board. Um, well, actually, I want to start with uh, uh, update for the construction standards first. I think the board needs to vote on this to get it in our specs. Um, so this is something I've talked about all, all through um, my term as superintendent here is, um, you know, the, the city of Lepore has the third oldest water system in the state of Indiana. So um, when a lot of the pipes, let's call in the heart of the city, uh, were put in, you know, they were undersized mains, um, the right size mains for that time. But uh, as we all know, along with, you know, other communities, uh, that changes. So we need to uh, change our standards in the pipe size uh, that we allow inside the city limits. Uh, this will help with funding. Um, the reason I'm bringing this right now, uh, ju just for an example, Indiana Ave right now has a six inch water main on it. Um, I prefer to run a 12 um, down Indiana Ave. So the state basically pays you for what's there already. And if we change those standards to an eight inch pipe, which gives us better fire protection, um, water quality, uh, all around the board, uh, then we can pay the difference between the eight to the 12 instead of from six to 12. So, and it's not just about the money for the state. Uh, it, it's something that we need to do as a city as we're running new water mains in different areas, not allow anything smaller than eight inch pipe. That way we don't have these problems with the high flow events that we're talking about in the outskirts of town and different water systems that hook onto our water system. Uh, it's just better all around for flow, water quality, uh, and building the system for the future. The the Board of Works has the ability to update the Public Works standards, construction standards, from time to time. Uh, we haven't had a wholesale adoption of our standards since about 2004, and I think over that course of you know this time, we we've, we've had made some minor changes. Um, so this would actually go into Section 6.10 of our um, of our standards for design and construction for Public Works project, and it would just specifically state minimum pipe size which right now we don't we don't have that listed it's more of a policy by the water department so instead of having a policy it'd be good to have in our actual standards and again uh, something that the board does on a you know regular basis kind of update these standards so you need a motion today yeah so there's no stated size and we're now going to state a size of eight, eight inch. inches eight inch minimum for uh, we'll call them transmission or distribution mains. So that, that would still allow um, a project to come off that eight inch main and run a six, uh, six inch feed into a property, which happens a lot. But we, we just feel, uh, Nick and I have had a lot of conversation about this, that it, it's time to upsize that pipe to eight inch standard uh, throughout the city when, whenever we're changing water main. Especially with the growth, then we're going to be exactly, seeing. exactly. Right. Motion to approve. So moved. Second, further discussion. Did you mention then that the state would pay for the change in a main from eight inches to twelve inches? Is that what I understood? Or? Well, so right now it's a six-inch main. So if I, I would like to run twelve-inch main. So we'd have to pay the difference between six and twelve. Um, I'm hoping with with the standard being in place. Uh, Oh, that we don't, don't allow have six anymore, then the state would have to have to put the eight inch in, and then we could upsize from eight to twelve. Uh, just just, just to bring, let our dollars go a little further on that project, um, but in in the whole scheme of things, just to get better flow uh, and fire protection around the city. Uh, now we'll have eight inch mains hooking onto some of these l smaller lines. We'll have um, we'll have the high velocity events that. That we have that's what we're trying to limit throughout the city uh, you know i know there's a lot of talk about uh, 
you know, the city has a lot of work to do. That's true, we do, but we do it every year. Every year we're improving the water system, and it's, it's, it's an ongoing battle, and, and that's what you do as, as, a, as, a, as a water distribution entity of the city is you're constantly upgrading your infrastructure, and, and this is just an important part to, to move that whole process forward uh, with the 8-inch standard in the pipe. And again, it's been a policy, just never made it into the standards, which I haven't had a, like I said, substantial update in you know, 19 years. Right. So. I do have a motion and a second. <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. I oppose. Motion passes 2-0. Thank you. Uh, next, um, I'm excited to bring a couple gentlemen in the in the audience here that we've worked with over the, the years a lot. Uh, this is all for the Soldier Memorial uh, Wellfield. I know we've talked about this a lot in the past. We're getting close. I uh, can't wait to, to start moving this project forward. It, it's a big deal for us. Um, so I, I'm going to lean on Nick Otis and, and Nick Minnick here a little bit. Uh, um, what we're asking for is to be able to request um, qualifications for a guaranteed savings uh, contract for, for this project. And um, I'm going to let the, the gentlemen here that have dealt with it a lot kind of explain it to the board. That way we can move, move forward with, with this. Um, this is Howard Jones from Nice Engineering. He's worked, worked with uh, a lot of the city members here for, for a long time. He's a very trusted engineer. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Howard. Jones Nice Engineering. Uh, this project is um, going to put new wells in place to serve the Lake Street water treatment plant. Plant one is sometimes called Lake Street. Um, this is an important project because over the years, the wells that are in place have become less capable, and Lake Street realistically finds itself with far more high service pump capacity than it has raw water capacity. This was really kind of highlighted last year during the fire at American rubber. That plant was able to produce about 3,000 gallons per minute coming out of the plant, but only for a short period of time. Then it had to back off because the wells had to catch up. The wells weren't able to keep up with the, with the high service pumping. So this is um, a really important project to get more raw water into the plant. Um, the intention is to put these wells in at Soldiers Memorial, uh, run along Lakeshore, Craven, a little bit of Weller, Central, then Lake Street to the plant. And we're looking at about 8,000 feet of main. Um, typically, the projects that we've done in the past, an engineer would design the job, produce plans, specifications. The job is bid. Whoever comes in low, that's who's doing it. And there's, there's been occasions where you would have rather had somebody else do the job, but, but your hands are tied if you've bid the job. You'd have to take the low bidder. You can kick them out, but it becomes quite a challenging effort. The way the guaranteed savings contract works is that you still have a set of plans, you still have specifications, you still have an engineer stamping those drawings. Those are still the blueprint for, for how the job's going to be built. But your contractor comes on board more as a professional. They're selected uh, through their professional qualifications, their capability. There's a selection committee, and you, you pick the, the, the group that you think is going to do the best job for the city, is going to provide the best. Um, we at Nice Engineering haven't worked on one of these projects. Nick, I believe you have. Yeah. Um, but we're quite happy to promote it and recommend that you do it. The broad reasons, flexibility. You, you get to pick who you want. And, and, and we've all had it where a contractor comes in low, everyone's begging somebody else to come in lower than them and they don't. And you're stuck with somebody that Oh, goodness, you really wish you didn't. And you're going to spend much more on engineering then doing the construction phase because somebody's going to be watching them like a hawk. Every little thing's a problem. It's a change order. It comes back to bite you. The money you saved up front, you don't save it over the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, along with that flexibility, if you bid a job, you pretty much have to give it to the low bidder. With this way, you send out that request for uh, quotes. They come in. If you don't like them, you don't have to award it. You can say, okay, guys, go back and sharpen your pencil. You've got to come up with a better request here, and we need to, we need to figure this out. So you've got greater flexibility. Um, scope of the work, a big part of this is that the selected contractor then spends anywhere from a month, if it's a really complex job, it could be longer than that. Working with the engineering firm, working with the city, 
to go over those plans. There's some things that seem like a fantastic idea to us, but when a contractor looks at it, maybe they go out and pothole it and have a look, they can come back and say, yeah, it's going to be a lot better if you think about doing it this way. And you may make those changes. They can build that into their, their costing and their budgeting. You're not looking at that as now a pretty major change order down the road. You've got that sorted out before we even start. Um, control. You would also have more control then over that scope change. If there's things that crop up, you don't like the sound of it, you've got the ability to, to make those changes before we get going with it. And there's transparency here. The contractor is required to have open book pricing. You can see exactly how they're pricing this out. You can see what their cost is, what their profit is, how they're billing this stuff to you. Um, there are communities around here who have done this. Valparaiso is one in particular. And what's encouraging to me is that they've done this process and they didn't come back and say, okay, that's the last time we're ever doing that. They've come back and done it again. That's now their favored method of doing this type of project. It doesn't necessarily mean it works for the port, but it's a good omen that this, this is a good way of doing this type of project. And I think this is a good project to dip your toe in. It's not massively complex. It's going to have its, its challenges. Every project always does. But it's a good project to dip your toe in, see how you like it. At the end of it, you guys might come back and say, OK, Howard. <laughs> Don't, don't bring another one of those to us. Well, you might come back and say, that's great. That's how we want to do all our projects now. It, 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 was a, it went very well. So I think what we're looking for today is for your approval to let us prepare that request for quote. And if it meets with Nick's approval and he's happy the way we're doing that, have it ready to be submitted, either just submitted or you want to wait until next public works, which would you rather do? Mm. In, How does that work then? Indiana bid law really allows us to, to do more than just the traditional design bid build. Um, there's, there's a lot of different models that are, are coming out of uh, different projects. We've used this model in the past and it's been successful. Um, <clears throat> there's a little bit less on the, on the front end than a traditional design build, which is another kind of uh, allowed project procurement method. So um, I would, I, I think it, it's worked well and it would be something really good to look at for this project specifically. So. Do I have a motion to approve? Well, and at the end of that contract too, it also the savings, um, you know, if the, in a traditional bid project, um, if the contractor comes in under that, that bid, they get to keep that money. In this uh, scenario, that money comes back to the city of LaPorte. So do I have a motion to approve? So Second. All right, discussion. So I'm trying to understand then how that that comes back before the board. You guys you guys approve that all on your own then? We say, okay, go ahead and pick who you want to pick and, and that just goes forward without us maybe knowing pricing or okay, no. No, no. no. It would it would be um, we'd receive proposals, we'd score the proposals, select a um, um, so is is the term for this qualification qualify and then contract. yeah and then um, they put together an agreement and you'd approve an agreement so what what because we've, we've seen done, what the lowest bid does yeah. a lot of and what we've done with the civic project is the tail end of our the last time we did this project which allows us to um, have more flexibility in the specifics of the project uh, and and then you know find something that fits and move forward with it so but you still come up because I know a lot of times when we talk about the bids or when you're opening the bids you say whether it came in close to the engineers yeah. budget or what you expected so that's still going to happen it's, it, everything's done now so when you select your your team um, and you you then work with them to kind of vet the project and then there's a there's a guaranteed number that they won't exceed in most cases so you don't what, what's nice in in this scenario on the ones we've worked on is um, we have a, a guaranteed maximum cost and it, it can be below that but we have a guaranteed maximum and if that project ends up being above that per the agreement that's that's covered by the contractor so it's kind of a it, it's a nice way to go into a project and know where the ceiling is on cost and there's some other benefits to doing it this way too. Again, I, I think 
um, communities are exploring the right project delivery methods and the right way to p procure contractors and designers and um, each project is going to be a little different based on scope and, and um, you know estimated cost and, and resources of the city and I think um, I think this is an, a good one to, to look at doing a little bit different than a traditional design bid build where you know we we don't know how it's going to end up but um, it'll really help Tim with his budgeting and it'll help us have a confidence level in, in the product we're going to get in the end. So. And our residents deserve the quality, not always the lowest price. I mean, that's correct. It's Value. paying off. The other, yeah. the other two gentlemen in the office or are, uh, are in the, the audience here have both worked with Valpo uh, extensively in the past. Uh, this is the only way Valpo does their wells and um, a lot of their water work uh, work. Um, so if you have any questions, both, both uh, Nick and Teddy <coughs> both are, are very versed in how this works through through city government. So I do have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Well, does this make it more efficient in hours for engineering and for the people on your team then? Yeah, everybody's kind of working together on this, you know, so you, you select an engineer and then you select a contractor and, and it's more like a team instead of the engineer and the city fighting with the contractor trying to get what they want you, you form a team um, you have the scope of work and, and you just move forward with the project uh, the best you can um, not, not only the cheapest but what what fits what fits your standards uh, the things that we're looking for um, our staff been around a long time we've seen things that work and don't work so uh, that's something they take in consideration when we sit down is you know maybe there's something I don't like maybe there's something Howard doesn't like maybe there's something uh, you know the the contractors don't like and you sit down and you talk about it. there's no change orders involved at this time like I said there there's a there's a set price at the end not to exceed anything we do below that 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 savings comes directly back to the city um, I, I just think it's a good way to in lack of better terms uh, get what you pay for and get what you want to, to be able to move your project forward the best you possibly can um, for the future it, it's also a risk mitigation. That if, if you get a fantastic contractor on a bid job, it could well cost you less than doing it in this method. Mm -hmm. Anything comes along that you didn't expect, which typically is what happens in a project. This is a much better framework for handling that because you've got people working together more as a team as opposed to somebody thinking, bingo, change order. Right. Now, to be clear, are you approving us generating the request for the quote and issuing it or just Is generating that what you're it, having Nick review it and then you'd like to see that before it gets no, out. I, what are what are you request? That's I, I, I think I'm gonna lean on Nick Otis like for the that. Second what that we will generate it and send it out and then the the proposal that the city is recommending will bring back to you at a later later meeting. I'm comfortable for the, with in, that. If, yeah. Because you always have the option then of rejecting then get, those proposals. Right. Yes. So you're not yeah. duty bound to accept one of them. I like that. And typically we accept those proposals at a, at a meeting so you would see those proposals before we go into the selection process. But you're going to bring it back before you do any work anyway. So I, that, I think the fire station three was the last project that we've done under a guaranteed savings project was uh, fire station was design build. Okay. So it's slightly different, but the, the meter project, which had some other things in it, was the last. Okay. So we do have a motion and a second. Further questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 2-0. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Thank you. Last, anything else? Uh, no, I, th I think uh, we're going to take the... the um, service the professional services professional off. service agreement with peerless actually will be part of the okay. guaranteed savings so jerry jackson uh got a engineering proposal from uh, jones petrie rafinski jpr uh, to design sewer on mcclung road from east shore parkway to cable in that's the last section there where that hasn't been sewered on mcclung um, JPR does a, works with a lot of uh, small um, utilities that do grinder pumps around lakes. They've done a whole lot of this sort of work. Um, the, uh, I got experience working with them through the regional sewer district. 
So I, I was impressed with their work. They, they've obviously done this a million times. And I, I Jerry, do we have that copy? You should, and if you don't, I'll pass over mine. Um, Please. They, they um, quoted both engineering and construction services. And at this point, I'd ask you just to approve the engineering. The, um, the, that, that job is upstream to a uh, lift station rehab on McClung Road. And I think when this engineering gets done, we'd, we'd bid the both products, projects together and uh, pick a construction, uh, someone to manage construction at that time. Engineering. We're talking about just the engineering? Yes. The design? Just the design. So task one. Yep. So again, just simple fifth grade form. We will have sewer all the way to McClung? All the way to McClung and all the way down McClung. This would also include the piece going up to the development on Seavers, the proposed development on Seavers. So. so for those that have said there's no sewer in the city, they never did it, we're doing it. We're doing it. That's great news. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? And this will be done this year and your, your thoughts? The, the engineering will be done in the next few months and then we're, I believe we've got the, the funding. It's in our project list. I, I keep hedging because price has been so high and you're, I'm trying to juggle. But yes, that's the plan. I mean, this is a big complaint members have had or residents have had before this administration that the city needs to do their part and fulfill the sewer. So this is a good sign. Further discussion? You see the entire project being done this year or just this first? Because I see there's three different tasks listed. So is it the whole project? Well, the, um, I, when the bidding of the project, I would like to bid the reconstruction of the McClung Road lift station. That's, a, that's right on the shore of Clear Lake and that sewer extension. So I'm hoping I can fund both of those and fund them both this year. That would be my plan. Okay. I think it makes sense to bid them together. They're, they're right in the same neighborhood and we'll get a better price. Okay. Further discussion? Motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, 2-0. Motion passes. Uh, I've got a um, septic, uh, septage hauler discharge permit for the board to consider. The, uh, it's um, Commercial Sewer Cleaning Company is the name of it. They're, they're, uh, they're out of Indianapolis, but they do work up in this area. Uh, it would be a new customer for us hauling septage to the treatment plant. Um, they, Matt's, Matt's uh, looked into them. They've got their insurance. They've got good references. They've got a permit from IDEM, so I'd recommend approval. Motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And uh, the last thing I've got is pay request number 11 for our phosphorus project. It's in the amount of $89,077. That brings us to 85% uh, completion. The, uh, they're just about, they're, com they're getting the electrical work up, up uh, the communications back to our computer system that runs everything. That's gonna get operational probably the end of this week, early next week. Uh, they should have all the, the chemical feed connection points all completed. Um, probably got a month left in this, but we're about there. Is this the one that has been slower than expected? It, it has, and uh, we're still not, uh, we're feeding chemical, we're still, we're very close to compliance, but not quite. We're supposed to make one, and we're 1 1.2, 1 1.3. Uh, I've had some conversations back and forth with item about what to do. We're an unusual plant, um, and we're looking at some alternatives. Today, they're, we're turning on a second feed point. I'm optimistic that that'll get us in the right numbers. Um, we're, there are very, very few treatment plants like ours, so everyone's kind of thrashing about trying to figure out the best way to manage it. But we're supposed to be there by the end of this month, correct? Right, right. so we're getting very close. And, and, and you think that'll happen? It's, we're, we're right now where I, I'd say I don't, pro, I, I don't think so. We're, we'll be real, real close, but I don't, uh, the average I don't think is gonna make it. 
but there'll be some leeway because we're working with them I and think trying give us and leeway. because we're a different type of animal? I, th I, I believe they will. They've, they've indicated they will in conversations, not in writing. Uh, <laughs> and I've what happens if we're not? Uh, they'll ex they they could issue a um, if if they don't see us moving in the right direction and getting in compliance, they could issue an order. They could potentially fine us. That seems unlikely because we're doing all the right things. Okay. Um, but that's always a possibility. Usually, they uh, issue a um, an order and say you need to give me a plan on how you're going to get in compliance. That's okay. their usual. But we also have the vendor that has been very slow. We have. I, I wanted some months to fool around and figure out the best way to run the things, and we didn't get that because the vendor's been slow. And we have enough funds to make a difference if they're not doing it fast enough, we can hold back payment. Yes. Yep. Yep. I have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 2-0. Thank, Thank you, Jerry. You. Craig Phillips. Jamie, can we help you? <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay, so this is a request for approval of the annual uh, maintenance contract for landscaping services, mowing primarily um, for the um, Beechwood Lakes property. We contacted several companies, uh, several local companies, and um, the reason I apologize you haven't had this in advance is because I was hoping for another quote from another company but didn't receive that in time for this meeting. So um, you have four quotes in front of you that we received. Um, they're listed, uh, or they're, they're given to you from lowest to highest in terms of the cost per mowing. So primarily this is mowing uh, the property. Um, which is a very large job, mm -hmm. and then the cost of additional um, on-call services basically as needed as things arise out there. So you have four quotes, um, one from Baker Fence, uh, one from K&K &K Outdoor <coughs> Services, one from Mofield Property Services, and one from Lakeshore Seasonal Services. Um, they range from $650 per mowing up to, uh, I think the top one was 13, sorry, 1121 mm -hmm. per mowing. So it's a big range. Um, and although the proposal or the, the quote from Baker Fence um, was the lowest, um, we're actually not recommending going forward with them. We've had a contract with them, or, or we've had an arrangement with them, I guess would be the proper way to put this, not a contract, um, in the past few years. Um, however, we've had real problems with receiving invoices on time, uh, which forced us to uh, encumber funds last year in order to cover anticipated um, invoices we still have yet not received from, last, from late last summer for services rendered. Um, so we're, we're not recommending going forward with, with um, Baker Fence and their, uh, even though they are the, the lowest cost per mowing. Um, so my recommendation would be that we consider the next lowest, which would be K&K &K Outdoor Services of LaPorte um, for $750 per mowing, a charge of um, $95 per hour for spring cleanup, basic spring cleanup, and then um, other work as needed as directed by me uh, at $95 an hour as well. Um, and then you have, you see the prices of the other two. Um, but as I look we, here, Mofield, you've got 953 for KK and Mofield's 900. Uh, that's the total including the other services. So it's 750 base rate okay. for mowing. This is the spring cleanup hourly charge. Gotcha. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. 
Second, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 2-0. Thank you. Thank you. Nick Minnick. Uh, first of my <clears throat> item I have is pay application number four for the 2020 street paving program. Um, I'd been holding the last invoices they had sent, uh, just waiting for some punch list items to, to start moving. Uh, we, we had a meeting. Those are moving now. And um, I'm requesting to reduce retainage down to just 2%, which covers everything we need left for them to do. So um, pay application is in the amount of $359,931.22. I'd recommend approval. Make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? I mean, the one part of this bidding that I like that you do where you can pick that would also include vendors not speaking direct and stating misinformation to our businesses and creating issues, so you could address that, correct? Correct. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 2-0. Thank you. The next item I have, um, which I apologize, I sent this morning. I, if you need a copy, I have it here. Um, we, we're trying to keep everything moving on the Truesdale and Clear Lake project. Um, there's been a lot of value engineering. We're really trying to make sure that that project's delivered uh, and is, is just a, it's going to be a great project for the community. Um, we're able to have a little bit of efficiency here where Lockmuller Group is doing the construction inspection on the Chessie Trail and they're willing to help out with the um, Truesdale Clear Lake project as well and uh, they'll have the, the manpower here in Laporte to do this. Um, this contract is an hourly contract and it, it should serve at least the, the first half or more of the work, but because we're still kind of working through some of that value engineering, we don't know exactly where everything will end up. So um, this is for $150,000 that we may come back, we may go to the Redevelopment Commission or, or others who have partnered in this project. Um, but to start, we have a, a contract with Lock Mueller for construction inspection in the amount of $150,000. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. And, I mean, for the public's perspective, this is the worst. I mean, take out all the improvements that are going to happen. This is the worst road in Laporte. It has to be addressed. It's going to be paved. It's going to be reconstructed. Yeah, it's, it's this one year. of the Correct. It's it's. Um, I'd say it's definitely the worst, the most visible road in the city. We, we, you know, are continually trying to improve our overall pavement condition across the city. Um, one of the reasons this road hasn't been repaired is because we've been looking at trying to do a larger project. So, with the combination of the Redevelopment Commission, ARP funds, and the Healthcare Foundation. Now, Healthcare Foundation is not paying for the road. I don't want to make that very clear. They're not paying for the road portion of this project, but um, but we're able to do um, we're able to turn this into a just a very beautiful park road instead of um, what it is now, which is really not acceptable. So Healthcare Foundation is is funding the trail portion, and there's plaza areas and seating areas for picnics, and there's parking, and there's all kinds of different things that help serve um, the public getting out and getting active and, and being you know. A, getting into Fox Park and enjoying it, um, this, then the road portion is very significant for the city as well. Well, not to put you on the spot, will Truesdale be done for the Arts in the Park crowd? Yeah, that's why I'm trying to push to get, you know, the first phase of, of inspection funded. We, we awarded at, at the $5 million mark, although the project was over $7 million, um, because that's going to allow for Reith Riley to complete the, the road portion between McClung and Holocker um, ahead of Arts in the Park. So we're, nice. we're pretty excited about that. Um, working with Park Department to uh, increase some parking opportunities beyond what this project provides, which this project, um, it'll, it'll be a change. So it'll actually be a, a curbed road where you can't just pull off anywhere. It'll be a lot better for, for maintenance and management of the park. Um, but they'll be parking along the road still. We're not taking, taking that away, we're just having it in selected areas, and then it also includes 
expansion of um, of a parking lot in addition to the on-street parking. Um, really want people to be able to enjoy Fox Park and and um, have have it a little bit cleaner and, and well maintained. And, and this project is really going to help that. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. <clears throat> then the final final item I have is um, through our process bidding trash. We uh, we received proposals from several companies. And one thing we held off on because we just we didn't find the right um, right opportunity in our bids was um, uh, disposal of street sweepings. Um, what we'd like to do at this point is we have a we have a, a quote here from Board and Waste Away Services uh, to handle our street street sweepings in a way that's going to be the most efficient way for our street department. Um, they'll provide a 20 or 30 cubic yard dumpster 20 or 30 because it's really based on tonnage it needs to be 15 tons or less in order to meet DOT regulations um, the cost is one thousand thirty four dollars and twenty three cents and they they'll provide these at a frequency that is necessary to keep up with street sweepings instead of having things pile up um, these dumpsters the street sweepers can dump directly in so it's gonna it's gonna kind of help with the the double material handling that we have to do now and um, it's going to help a number of things just helping our street department be more efficient um, and again this is a, a per load cost and you know we will use them as necessary as, as long as we need to continue but they'll remove them out of the city yes yeah they'll they will remove them this is they will drop uh, a roll off we'll fill it they'll pick it up drop a roll off fill it pick it up and if anybody doesn't know how large a pile there was when we took over, thanks to Jeff, thanks to Jerry, uh, that pile is completed out, completely out? All the way gone. Fantastic. That, I mean, that's something the residents would have never seen. It just had been piling up for years. And now they're gone. So thank you both. And this will allow Borden to continue that and not pile anything up. Correct. And are we comfortable this addresses all issues? I, you've talked to board more than I have, but yeah, I think, I, I think so. Okay. I mean, the most important issue is, is making sure the street sweepings are taken care of. So. Yeah. Yes. So with that, do I have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. Second. The other part of that will be Borden does not have name identification here in the city of LaPorte. It'll give them an opportunity to provide an alternative um, product to us and name that the people might get used to seeing. And they, they didn't provide the, the lowest base bid for our overall trash contract, but um, they put a lot of effort into their bid and, and offered a lot of alternatives and, and were very creative with how they um, could could operate our overall you know trash program. Um, but with that being said, not being the lowest base bid, I think you know we, we have a great opportunity with waste management too. Um, but then, you know, it's, it's nice that we are able to uh, use a company that um, has, has uh, a good name recognition outside of Laporte um, and, and test out their services and, and see how they provide their services. If it would be okay, do, can I amend that motion to say with legal approval that we'll, we'll for, I mean, we'll approve it, but with any final sure. yep. discussion that needs to happen. Is so, there a timeline on this as well? Is this a contract um, or is this just? So, so it's just, it's just a, a unit price for, for the dumpster. And what I uh, talked to them about was, you know, keep the price for the year and then we would come back and, and have a new price on an annual basis. So, okay. so I think we'd look at this as, as, uh, as necessary throughout the year. How many loads? typically are there in a year <laughs> Jerry's hiding on that one I, I don't have the number in front of me I, I didn't know we we're gonna have quite a few discussion. right it's yeah. quite a few oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah originally we when we asked last time it was for two two thousand but that's not loads that was yards to yes. be to be taken out and I think we were probably closer to thirty five to four thousand that's that how, was that's how big up. that was that was the cleanup so we're guessing probably 
two to four a week of the dumpsters probably I'm guessing and that's that's probably pretty fair and then these aren't going into your system that's the other thing the public doesn't understand these street sweepings because what happens when they go into the, your infrastructure right I mean they're they're either tributary to the a storm sewer and they go into the lakes or, or they fill up the catch basins and we have to clean them then that's a much more expensive process than street sweeping or or they they go to the treatment plant and there we have to dispose of it again that's much more expensive than street sweeping so street sweeping is a much more cost effective and it and of course I, I like the look of clean roads like anybody Mm -hmm. it, it, it's the best way to do it so I just would want to make sure mr. Otis has an opportunity just to f confirm this with approval with Borden and their legal team all in favor aye, aye. opposed motion passes 2 0 thank you mr. Minnick mm -hmm. unfinished business anything before the board hearing none do I have a motion to approve motion to adjourn I'll make a motion, motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Everybody have a fantastic day.